previously in The Sims 4. Famous painter Schmablo Picasso was on a mission to steal his paintings back from his ex-girlfriend and crime syndicate boss, Bella Goth. To do so, he had infiltrated a criminal gang known as Triple Trifle, and, with the help of his new partners in crime, Fagan, Dick Dastardly and Robbie Rotten, there was nothing that could stand in his way. Whilst getting up to a bit of tomfoolery, the gang made friends with a woman named Megumi, who agreed to join them in their mission. Together, they made a plan to perform heists on three of the biggest public buildings in the neighborhood. And, against all the odds, during a trip to the Movers and Shakers gym, Megumi used her charm and charisma to get them all personal invites to the goth residence. This was Schmablo's big chance. And, as they arrived on the premises, the rest of the gang distracted the goth family, and he headed straight upstairs in search of his paintings. Little did he know that the only thing he was heading straight into was trouble. Bella was not downstairs with the rest of her family at all, and before he knew it, she was there in front of him. This was the absolute worst case scenario. Not only was Schmablo just a few meters away from his arch nemesis, but as he looked around Bella's room, his artwork was nowhere to be seen. He was beginning to panic, but he had to try and act natural. Bella didn't seem to have recognized him, thanks to his unbelievably convincing disguise. Schmablo introduced himself to her as Pablo. Haha, <laughs> she'll never see through that one. And, trying to keep up the act, he began to make polite conversation, all the while searching for a way to excuse himself from the room. Of course, it didn't help his case that he had just agreed to a game of chess. Schmablo asked Bella about what she did for work. Bella told him she ran several businesses within the neighborhood, such as a nightclub and a museum. This was intriguing, and Schmablo wanted to ask more. But before he could, Robbie Rotten attempted to steal a houseplant downstairs, and Bella sensed that something was wrong. Seeing an opening, Schmablo made a break for it, but Bella was following him downstairs. Schmablo quickened his stride and went to hide in the kitchen. Meanwhile, Robbie Rotten was trying to play the whole thing off by pretending to be asleep. Once the commotion died down, however, he crept upstairs by himself and began to loot all of Bella's possessions. He then went down to the bathroom and tried to steal the bath plugs, but Bella caught him in the act and asked him to stop. Dick Dastardly had made his way outside, and he sent the gang a warning signal using his iPad. But Schmablo wasn't paying attention. He got greedy and tried to steal a lampshade. At which point, Bella's husband Mortimer appeared out of nowhere, and the gang were escorted off the premises and told to go away and never come back. When they got home, they were all feeling a little bit disappointed. No paintings, no successful steals, and that was weird, where had Megumi gone? But just as all seemed lost, Schmablo remembered what Bella had said about the nightclub and the museum. This was concrete proof that their plan had been on the right track. All they had to do now is what they were going to do in the first place. A couple of cheeky heists, and Schmablo was sure that his paintings would turn up. The next day, the gang readied themselves to ransack the nightclub. Robbie Rotten tested out his new electric taser technique by pranking Schmablo, but it didn't go very well. Schmablo tried to get back at him by using his new air horn technique, but that went just as poorly. Eventually, Megumi was calling, as she wanted to apologize for disappearing last night. This reunion got Schmablo so overcome with joy that, upon seeing her, he gave her a big fat kiss. What's more, it seemed to go down pretty well, and Schmablo could feel some chemistry building between the two of them. That is, until Megumi left to go and sift through the gang's computer. She was probably just checking over the details of tonight's heist, and she was right to do so, because the night was approaching fast, and the crucial time was at hand. They arrived at the nightclub at 9.25 on the dot just as planned. Schmablo changed into his disguise and headed in. Immediately, he was drawn to a large piano in the middle of the room. He walked over and began to play some of his greatest hits. He was so good, in fact, that a crowd began to gather around him. And, with all the attention on Schmablo, Fagan was able to drift upstairs and he noticed a bunch of artwork lining the walls. 
He didn't know whether this was the artwork that Schmablo had been talking about, but he decided to steal some anyway. Back downstairs, the crowd around Schmablo was getting really rather big. So big, in fact, that he hadn't noticed that Bella Goff was sitting only a few meters away. Cunning as ever, and sensing an opportunity, Fagan snuck back downstairs and made a move. He sat down with Bella Goff and asked her if she knew the artist of the paintings he had just stolen. Bella didn't know, which meant that this was not Schmablo's work. Upon further inspection, Schmablo was appalled that Fagan had ever mistook this rubbish for his. He painted fine pieces like Marshmallow Man Runs Away From Tower Bridge and Will Smith's House. So the raid on the nightclub was not a success, and after Fagan caused a distraction using the gang's new air horn technique, they pieced the scene and went home to bed empty-handed. Although the gang were upset about this, the bright side was they were now 100% certain that the paintings they were looking for were in the Municipal Museum. And for Schmablo in particular, the good news did not end there, as his phone started to ring and Megumi called to invite him on a date. Schmablo couldn't believe it. A date with the woman of his dreams. Oh man, oh boy, oh man, he must have been the happiest guy alive. They headed into a bar together, and Schmablo ordered them a round of dim and gusty, which was really, uh, tasty. With a drink inside him, Schmablo began to try out his flirting game. He was using all of the classics, like, So, I heard you're a fan of raisins, but how do you feel about a date? Which was a pointless question, as they were already on a date. With the smooth talking out of the way, Schmablo plucked up the courage to ask the big question. Was Megumi single? No. She was... Married? It couldn't be! Schmablo's heart was broken. But Schmablo was a man of moral fibre. And even after hearing this devastating news, he made sure to sit a respectful distance away from Megumi for the rest of the date. No, it turned out that the reason Megumi had invited him here was so that she could discuss tonight's heist on the museum with him one-to-one. -one. She revealed to him that she was actually an undercover cop, investigating the surroundings of Schmablo's own mysterious death. Megumi told Schmablo that she would stop at nothing to help reunite him with his art, and she assured him that Bella Goff wouldn't know a thing that he would walk away a free man, and that the rest of the Triple Trifle Gang would be thrown in prison where they belong. Schmablo headed back home not quite knowing how to feel. Of course, he was gutted that Megumi had a husband, but a more pressing matter now filled his mind. Could he really sell out the Triple Trifle Gang? After all, they'd been through so much together, he'd sort of grown to like these guys. Fagan and his funny hat, Dick and his hacking skills, Robbie and his silly walk. He kind of considered them his friends. What was he to do? The day rolled on, and the crew changed into their super serious heist disguises. Megumi came over once more, and Schmablo apologized to her for making romantic advances even though she was married and pregnant apparently. She was pregnant the whole time as well, oh my god. But Schmablo didn't have time for any more revelations. He went into the bathroom and tried to hype himself up. Okay, he was gonna do this, no matter the cost. He set out on this journey for one reason and one reason only. And just because he'd accidentally fallen for a pregnant woman and become friends with a load of cartoon villains, that wasn't gonna change. He was going to get his artwork back. That evening, as the sun was setting, they arrived at the museum. Everyone headed around the side, and Megumi started to give them all a pre-heist briefing. Schmablo was itching to get inside. Megumi gave a nod in his direction, and he saw this as his cue to go. But, as it turned out, Megumi wasn't nodding at him at all. She was nodding to someone behind him. And then, the unthinkable happened. It was all a setup. Megumi wasn't an undercover cop at all. She was an undercover friend of Bella Goth, posing as an undercover cop, posing as a gang member. Megumi began to explain that Bella had realized that what she did was wrong, 
and how she never should have stolen Schmabler's paintings, and that she had lost all of them in a game of poker anyway, and that the Mount Komarebi Mafia now had them and were putting them up as the grand prize of the Mount Komarebi skiing competition. What? Schmablo didn't believe a single word of it! Without hesitation, he hit Bella Goff with the air horn technique and made his escape. He ran inside the museum and across the hall to where his artwork probably was, at which point he found he really needed the toilet. But then he came back and he began searching everywhere for his paintings. Was this his artwork? Um, oh gosh, he couldn't remember. He stole it anyway just to make sure. Okay, what about this one? Was this his artwork? No, this one was too French Impressionist. And how about this one? Was this his artwork? No, this wasn't either. It was far too postmodern. He saw Bella and Megumi leaving outside, and it finally dawned on him. Maybe they weren't lying. Maybe his artwork wasn't in this museum. And if that was the case, he now knew exactly where he had to go. No! Don't leave, Schmablo! cried the Triple Trifle Gang from behind him. But Schmablo kept walking. He walked all the way home and began to paint. It would be his first painting since all those years ago, and he would leave it here as a parting gift to Triple Trifle, so they always knew just where to find him. He named it Mount Komarebi. It was time for Schmablo to learn how to ski.